Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Universal Studios Orlando and there are so many new things to do in the park. I'm so excited to show you some of them. Of course, we have the brand new Minion themed land with a whole bunch of food offerings and a brand new attraction based off the Minions and a lot of other things that I just haven't had the chance to come out and check out yet. So we're gonna ride some rides, eat some food and have a beautiful Universal Studios kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. It has been a long time since the last time I was here at Universal Studios Orlando, but I'm excited that I'm here today and I'm ready to ride the movies. The new Minion attraction hasn't officially opened yet, but they're doing like test runs with it and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to actually go ride it and let you guys know what I think. But on top of that, I also just want to show you guys all of the cool things that I like to do at Universal Studios whenever I come out and visit. It's a very hot and humid July day here in Florida and I'm hoping the afternoon showers stay away and the crowds are low but it tends to get a little bit busy during the summertime here so we'll keep an eye on the wait times and see how busy the park is. I'm also excited to talk about Halloween Horror Nights this year. I've already purchased my frequent fear pass and Universal announced Stranger Things, The Last of Us, we already know about Chucky, and I can't wait to see what other houses are going to get announced. And also, I'm going to talk about some of the rumors I heard about some of the houses, which I'm kind of very excited for. So far, by the look of things, it seems to be very quiet here today. There's actually nobody entering in the park, and that could be because there's some rainstorms in the area, but nothing too crazy, just your normal Florida hourly rain that just comes and goes whenever it feels like it. A lot of people have been talking about the new Minion attraction and I feel like it's getting mixed reviews. A lot of people are saying it's a unique family friendly ride that fits perfect in the park and some people just don't like it. They don't like the idea or the concept. It is definitely unique and something different so it's going to be cool hopefully that we get to ride it. I even wore my Minions Roosevelt shirt. Look at this. Isn't that awesome? I love, I love how Roosevelt always has a shirt for whatever occasion I'm doing something for. And even Universal Studios, they have tons. And they even sell them here inside the park too. I'm not the biggest Minions fan, only because I feel like uh, the reason we'll never see Michael Scott uh, in a new season of The Office is because of Despicable Me and the pile of money uh, Steve Carell is sitting on from voicing Gru. But uh, yeah, this shirt is amazing. And Roosevelt's has a couple of different other Minion ones too. I just got back from Hershey Park. I actually went up there to uh, hang out with my sister for her birthday. And when I was up there, uh, the new Minions ride soft open. So it's been open for a day and it's okay. I mean, I'd rather spend time with family than ride a ride for the first time. And I've got some more travels uh, to come. I know that I'm gonna be at San Diego Comic-Con. So if any of you guys end up going to San Diego Comic-Con, swing by the Roosevelt's booth. Uh, I think they have two this year. Uh, I will be at one booth one day on Friday and then one booth uh, another day on Saturday. But you guys can check my Instagram uh, for the exact times. Usually it's like two to four or four to six. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of fun things to come. This is my first time being back to Universal Studios since the Minion Land opened and I haven't tried any of the food or anything so I'm very excited. A lot of people like the food, some people don't like it at all but we're going to test it all out and see what it's like. I'm gonna try to do Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios today because there's a lot of new things over on Island side as well, but that all depends on the time and if we get any rain. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the plan. That's what we're going with. Right here is the new Minions ride, Illuminations Villain Con Minion Blast, and it's currently closed. It's inside the old Shrek Theater, and hopefully it opens back up, but in the meantime, maybe we'll get something to eat. 
The new Minion Cafe is actually in the old Monsters Cafe building and I'm a little sad about that because I love the Monsters Cafe and I was so sad to see it go but the way Epic Universe is looking, I am so excited for all of the monsters inside that park. That park is gonna be so good. Like Epic Universe is gonna do amazing things for the theme park industry and Orlando itself and I am so excited. Right here is the new Minion Cafe, like I said, where Monsters Cafe used to be. And they have a whole bunch of different Minion themed snacks. They got banana popcorn there. They've got some really cool things inside the cafe, some ice pops, and we'll try a couple of it. I don't want to try too much though, but I kind of want to try it all. Well, we've made our way inside Minion Cafe, and the first thing I noticed is it smells amazing in here. It's very bright, colorful, lots of window space so you can see the sun coming in, and uh, we're gonna get ourselves a table. I'm excited, what are they prepping over here? Look at spaghetti in a shoe. Here is a quick look at the Minion Cafe menu. Lots of unique food items on here. They've got Mel's Meatball Mountain, which is like a unique style of pizza. They've got Otto's Noodle Bowl that comes with slow roasted porchetta. I'm so excited, I love porchetta, especially coming from Pennsylvania. Makes me think, do people say porchetta or porchetta? Back up in Northeast Pennsylvania, we say porchetta. Then they also have Agnes's Honeymoon Soup, which is green tomato soup crispy pork belly, tomato gummy bear, and basil oil served with a pimento cheddar grilled cheese sandwich. That sounds like a grilled cheese lover's dream. And then uh, some desserts like the Minion Swiss Roll, I think we're gonna get that, and some specialty beverages, a PX41 Punch, the Antidote, which is a banana flavored soda. Yeah, I like this. I think we'll uh, get a couple of them and see what it tastes like. The specialty drinks have arrived. Here is the antidote. I like the cups, they look really awesome. And then here is the other one. Now, someone told me that I should mix this one because when you mix the banana soda with the whipped cream, it tastes like a banana cream pie. But they told me don't mix that one. So we're not gonna mix it and we are gonna mix it and then we're gonna try them. Just so you guys know, I'm a big banana fan. I love banana cream pie. I, I eat bananas all the time. In fact, there's always money in the banana stand. So I'm probably gonna really love uh, the antidote here. I think, I'm, I, I hope I'm not mixing them up. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of mix. Oh, make sure you take a sip first. Then mix. Oh, it already, oh, it's exploding. Maybe I shouldn't have mixed it. Yeah, take a bigger sip. Oh, that is good. It tastes like a lot. It, it's really, it tastes like banana runts. You ever get the runts and you get the little banana ones? That's what this tastes like. Definitely make sure you take a sip before trying to mix this because it will cause a big mess. But I'm cleaning up, I got a napkin. And look at how cool it is, it's yellow. <laughs> the napkin's yellow from the table. Not from the table, from the drink. But it could be from the table too. Now we're going in on this one here. Ooh, that's unique too. That's a nice lemonade in there. Very refreshing. Mm. I definitely think that this drink would be better without the whipped cream. In fact, I don't want any whipped cream inside there. It's like a fruit punch lemonade mixed together. But this one is good with the whipped cream and it's good to mix around too. Both of these drinks are actually really good and I'm sure the kids love them. I don't know if you get to keep the cups. I can't tell. It'd be cool if you get to keep the cups because they're they're actually really cool looking cups. And for dinner, I ended up getting three of the items because I wanted to try the porchetta sandwich. I wanted to try the meatball mountain and also uh, one of the bowls. I think that I got the auto bowl because it looks so cool. And then we've got the minion Swiss roll for dessert. So we have a good variety of different items that we can try and uh, see what it's like. You're being stared at. Yep. We're just gonna take. Bring the noodles up, and just pour it over. 
All right, the food has arrived and it's really cool because they're using a table delivery service. So you sit down at a table, you scan the code, you order through the app and then they bring it out to you. And we've got Drew's uh, pork uh, sandwich with the porchetta here with minion tater tots, which look good. And then we have Otto's noodle bowl right here, which also looks amazing. I see all the porchetta in there. You got the eggs. And then here is the meat meatball pizza this looks so unique i'm kind of excited to try the meatballs i'm a big meatball fanatic and uh I'm, i've never had a pizza that looked like this and then the banana swiss roll which they said be careful because the banana doesn't taste like a banana <laughs> so i'm kind of excited to try that all right first things first we're gonna try uncle drew's belly filling pork sandwich with some pork head in there look at this I'm excited to try this because I'm uh, like a plain eater. I don't like a lot of condiments and almost everything that's on this sandwich, I actually do enjoy. It comes with chimichurri sauce, a mustard aioli, an apple butter bacon jam, arugula served on a Hawaiian pretzel roll and with green banana chips. But I opted in to get the little uh, minion tater tots. And look at how cute these are. We're gonna try the tater tots first, so here we go. Those tater tots are so good, holy moly. Big fan right there. And now, to the sandwich itself. Look at this big beefy sandwich. Here we go. No joke, I love this sandwich. It really is so good. It's got a good combination of sweet and savory, and I like it. Like I said, I like all the different flavors in there. Normally, everything I eat is a little plain Jane, but this is right up my alley. And the pork head is good. I can add, I, I, I could definitely see them add a little bit more seasoning. Pork head is Porchetta is usually loaded with tons of seasoning, but these tater tots are so phenomenal. And look, I kind of bit the minion's head off there. <laughs> now I'm gonna dive into the pizza, and I'm not even sure how you eat this. Is this like a slice? Does it, like, do you pick it up? Oh, I guess you pick it up. Oh, well, look at, yeah, you pick it up, and I think you just eat it like a, eat it like a slice. It's got a very soft undercarriage, no crisp at all, but, uh, Looks like the top is actually looking pretty good, so we're gonna give it a go. My first bite was just crust. That's it. So we're gonna have to do that again. I, actually, I might use a fork and cut it up. <laughs> Literally, I took a bite, it's just all crust. So it must be all in the middle and then they fold it up. Kind of like a calzone or a stromboli. And the meatballs look too round for me. You can't trust perfectly round meatballs. I've learned that in life. So we'll try it. But maybe they might be good meatballs. I don't know. I do love me meatballs. So here we go. This was great success, but not so much this. I mean, I tried the meatballs. I tried the sauce. I tried the crust. And kind of just reminds me of like Sam's Club or Costco meatballs. Got to have something unique in there. And now it's time to dive on into... Uh, the bowl here and look at those noodles they look so thick and i'm sure i'm gonna love this because i already love that porchetta and all of the other ingredients are also things that i like so uh i guess we'll grab some noodles that looks just about right if you add some pepper to this soup it'll probably make it a lot better because like i said porchetta definitely has a lot of pepper on it but here we go first bite We've definitely got some winners here. I really love the noodles and the porchetta, and then of course the sandwich, but we also have some losers. I'm sorry, Meatball, just wasn't there for me. And now we gotta try the dessert. And I'm so intrigued by that banana. I wonder what it's gonna taste like. Like, this is interesting. I, I didn't hear any of this. The first time I heard that the banana doesn't taste like banana. I've always heard that the snozberries taste like snozberries. I mean, should I even wait or should I just go straight banana and then Swiss roll? You know what I mean? I think we should just do the banana. Mystery flavor. How do we, well, how do we even know? Do I cut it? I'm going to pick it up like this. Because the banana deserves to get picked up. I wonder if I have to peel it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mystery banana flavor here. Passion fruit. That's what the banana tastes like. But, <laughs> I mean, it, it does taste good, but I, I was like expecting something that I wasn't going to like. I don't know. But anywho, so we're going to cut into the Swiss roll now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to do this. I hate when food looks at you when you're about to cut into it. Look at the way this minion's looking at me. I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> in fact, we're gonna take the top piece right here. Oh no, not his eye! Not his eye! And here we go. Mmm. I like the Swiss roll. I like the Swiss roll a lot. It was actually really refreshing, not too heavy, and I would get it again, but I probably would want to try a different dessert. Make sure you walk around and explore Minions Cafe because they have a lot of cool stuff throughout the restaurant, but everything I'm looking at, I just see all of my favorite places when I used to come visit Monsters Cafe. Like back here, I loved coming back here and sitting down and listening to all the sounds and watching the movies at Monsters Cafe. This is my favorite little spot. And now it's just like a little banana factory back here. We got a bunch of bananas, I tell ya. Now it's time to keep moving along. We're gonna check back on the ride to see if it opens up. We're gonna ride some other rides, check out some other cool snacks they have throughout the park. But I wanted to come back here and say goodbye to the bananas before I left. So, all right, I'm going bananas. It looks like they opened up the new ride and I'm so excited so we're gonna be able to ride it before it officially opens. Villain Con! So much fun, it's a crime. Ooh, this guy looks fun. I'm enjoying all of the signage in here. Evil lives this way. And also, um, I'm sad that there's never gonna be another Halloween Horror Nights house in here. You know, they used to use Halloween Horror Nights, well, they used to use the Shrek Theater as a house, and I don't think they're gonna be doing that anymore. Because the attraction is in technical rehearsal, there's no filming or recording. So I'll just let you guys know what I think about the ride once we get done with it. But I'm excited, I like seeing all these henchmen. I kinda wanna be a villain. Well, that was definitely very interesting. I'm happy that I got to ride it. And like I said, you can't film it because they're going through technical rehearsals. I'm talking about the queue, but the ride itself, you can't film at all. Uh, but spoiler warning, I'm gonna fill you guys in on what I experienced. Uh, so if you don't wanna watch this or get spoiled, you know, click ahead. Uh, but it's a shooting attraction. Like it's a, it's a uh, skill based uh, attraction where they give you a gun like this, but it's a little bit bigger. This is a toy that they sell outside. And uh, you stand on a moving walkway, kind of like a conveyor belt, and you shoot at the screens and you build up a high score. They keep the high score right there. And I think it's a great family ride. I mean, the uh, 11 year old or two year old like version of me would have loved that attraction. I think it's perfect for that age group. And uh, yeah, it's really awesome how the theme park like industry keeps on coming up with unique ways to experience attractions. I will say, I think it's better than Shrek. I mean, I know that might be a hot take or a controversial opinion, but I feel like for the younger generation coming and uh, starting up a whole entire generation of new people exploring Universal, I feel like they would enjoy this attraction more than they would Shrek. But personally, I like Shrek. <laughs> Also, I feel like they missed out on a huge opportunity to make these uh, like blasters uh, capable or you know being able to use as you ride the ride, but you can't. It's just a toy set. But how cool would it be if you bought this, kind of like Web Slingers was, and you get to use it on the ride? It was only thirty-five dollars, so not too bad. Universal Studios Villain Con exclusive. Guess it's uh, something something uh, cool to have to remember the the day. And enough of the minion business. It's time to move along and enjoy all of the other amazing things here at Universal Studios. I do want to stop at the Jurassic uh, Park uh, uh, Tribute Store because I haven't been in there yet. And then maybe ride a ride or two? Looks like the Blues Brothers are pulling in. Wow, that's too cool. I still get excited seeing that. <sighs> Honestly, I wish one day I can actually ride in there. How cool would it be? I'd let them take me anywhere. I'd let them take me anywhere. 
This is also my first time being able to come out and check out the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary tribute store that they have here. And uh, like I mentioned before, Roosevelt's are selling shirts inside the park now. And I wanted to show you some of them because I think it's so cool. Oh look, right there, as soon as you walk in the door. Yeah, Roosevelt's right here and right there. Look at that. I love that. I really love it. I can't wait to see Roosevelt's in the Disney parks. I really hope that happens. And also, I love this Jurassic Park store. I mean, I love Jurassic Park. This is really cool. Holy moly. I love all of this. You know, walking through here when there's nobody inside is actually kind of scary. Like, I feel like I'm walking through like a Jurassic Park themed uh, Halloween Horror Nights house. I feel like the dinosaurs are gonna pop out at me at any moment. <laughs> this is so, this is kind of awesome, I love this. Look at this, the toilet, the T-Rex. This is classic. You guys could definitely tell how this is kind of scary, right? Like I'm not just picturing this, right? <laughs> Look at the raptor popping out over here too. I'm so afraid of everything. Like, I feel like something's gonna do something at any moment. I really like the Jurassic Park tribute store. I think that was so cool in there. Definitely felt a little like, kind of like, afraid something was gonna pop out and scare me, but I like dinosaurs. I have a friend who is so afraid of dinosaurs. Like, she won't do anything with anything that has to do with a dinosaur. But uh, yeah, gonna keep moving along, like I said, and now it's time to maybe ride a ride. I wanna go on, maybe the mummy. Let's see what the mummy's like. I always like to stop when I see that there's no Decepticons or Autobots outside because it's kind of like a guessing game on who's coming out. They have like a schedule posted somewhere around here, but I like it. It's like a little game. It could be anyone. It could be Bumblebee, it could be Megatron, it could be Optimus Prime. And if you come at the right time, it's like a little show. Oh, oh, it's happening. The show's happening. Who is it? It's Bumblebee, huh? <laughs> oh, he's jumping. And he can hop in line and actually meet him. Look at that. Very good. I decided on pulling a little hat trick on you guys because I noticed that they started selling Back to the Future hats. Little flat brims, just like my Jaws one. So I had to buy the Back to the Future one and I wanted to wear it. I get so excited and giddy when I see things that I want to try it on immediately. And I love it. Little hat trick. Hope you like it. I was planning on heading over to ride the mummy, but I want to make sure we make it over to Islands of Adventure. So I think I'm going to pass on the mummy for now. Maybe ride a ride once we get over to Islands. Maybe Velocicoaster or Hagrid's. You know what I mean? I feel like those are the rides I want to ride. Even though mummy's really good, but I just love Hagrid's and Velocicoaster. Like that park, like Islands of Adventure has two of my favorite rides in that park. So definitely got to make it over there. The last time I was actually here at Universal Studios, I think it was Mardi Gras. I think that was the last time I was here. So it had to have been at least two months ago. Like, wow, I feel like I need to get out here a little bit more often. Let me know if you guys want to see more Universal Studios videos in the future. And I'll try to make sure I get here at least once every two weeks or three weeks, you know? As we make our way over to King's Cross, I wanted to stop and look at Fast and Furious Supercharge. I'm a little jealous of Universal Studios Hollywood. They're going to be getting a Fast and Furious roller coaster, and all we have is this. Now, this ride is not my favorite ride, but I wish that it was at least the roller coaster. That one looks so awesome, and uh, it's going to do a lot of good things over there. Universal Hollywood needs more attractions though. I feel like uh, we definitely have a far superior park here on the East Coast. West Coast definitely needs some more action. So it's gonna do good over there. 
We have made our way down to Diagon Alley and uh, we're gonna head on in real quick just to see. I always like popping in there, maybe grab a butter beer, but this is usually the busiest part of the park. A lot of people hang out in here and I don't blame them. I'd hang out here too. Look at this, I always love this reveal too. Oh, never get tired of it. A lot of people always ask me, you know, you live and you come to the parks all the time, don't you get tired of it? How could you? Like, look at that. This is amazing, right? Oh, I love being here. We might actually be in time to catch Celestine Warback, which is a nice little show that they perform here in Diagon Alley. And then after that, like I said, maybe we'll grab a butterbeer. You can't really come to Universal Studios without getting a butterbeer. That's how I feel. Looks like we're just in time. A fine performance direct from Diagon Alley, featuring that musical model, that delectable diva, the spectacular singing sorceress herself, Celestina Warbeck. Catching that show that was awesome and during the winter time or during the holidays they actually do like a little holiday version over there and it's really cool because they uh, snow they usually make it uh, snow right here in Diagon Alley I'm pretty sure it's snow it's either snow or bubbles yeah sometimes I feel like they both are the same thing I'll tell you what if they were selling hot butter beer today I would definitely get some because I just love it but if not I'm just getting the regular one but the hot butter beer is so good I don't care if it's 90 degrees out and I'm sweating I will get it well I can't believe it but they actually did have hot butter beer so I ended up getting it some hot butter beer on a beautiful 90 degree July day couldn't ask for anything more Ugh. It's just so good. Honestly, like during the Orlando Informer event, if you guys haven't heard of the Orlando Informer meetup, it's basically a separate ticket event that you can purchase to come here to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. And included with that is all you care to enjoy, like food and beverages, including butterbeer. And during that event, I could drink like five of these in a row or until I'm sick. I love it so much. In fact, during the Orlando Informer meetup, when I say that it's all you care to enjoy, I mean you can get as much as you want. It's just grab and go. And in uh, the Wizarding World, they have Gilly Water. This is basically like a regular bottle of water. But during that event, I like to grab a bag and then grab as many of these and then have them sit in my fridge. So then when people come over, I give it to them and they're just like, wow, very fancy. Uh, and it's really cool. But I have not yet had that happen because nobody comes and visits me at my house so <laughs> I just drink them all myself <laughs> I, I think I've said that story before but I think it's so funny because when I first thought of it I was like this is gonna be great so many people are gonna be impressed <laughs> Speaking of the Orlando Informer meetup, I'm a little sad that I missed the last one that they had. That was the time that I was actually up in Pennsylvania with my mom and sister, and it was the first one I missed at, I think, almost like four years. But don't worry, I will be back at the next Orlando Informer meetup. I think it's going to be the winter meetup, and I'll be making a video, so hopefully I'll see some of you there. Until then, I'm just going to have to pay for my butter beer per cup. And that could be quite costly.
As for now, I'm taking my hot butter beer on the road and we're gonna take the Hogwarts Express over to Islands of Adventure. So we're gonna park hop. We're gonna park hop. Why did I say it like that? We're gonna park hop. I don't even know how I said it. I can't even repeat it. But yeah, we're gonna go into King's Cross and uh, hop aboard a train into uh, Islands of Adventure. I just realized now that this is the first time that I have been to the King's Cross station here at Universal Studios since I went to London and went to the actual King's Cross station. And it's really making me a little emotional because at one point in time, I would say about five years ago, I used to think coming here was the closest I would ever get to actually going to London. But I actually did go. Isn't that crazy? And I was fine with that. Like I was so happy with coming here and I'm like well this is the closest I would get to go to London and I love it and now I'm like wow I was actually at the real spot really mind-blowing it says the wait times 45 minutes but I have my uh, annual pass which honestly it has seen better days I think I need to get a new card but uh, because I have an annual pass I get Express after four so we can skip the line of course, it's always awesome to see people phase through the platform. Look at that. It's magic. Magic at its best. Oh, actually, I don't think the line's moving. But you'll see, they'll go right through that wall there. It happens, it really does. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. Doesn't look good without the fancy, like, mirror tricks. But, yep, we go in right here. And here it is, the Hogwarts Express. We're hopping aboard. Oh, I love this. My favorite people mover, other than the people mover. A lot of people don't know that this isn't actually a train, but it's actually an APM. It's a people mover, just like the APM they have at the Orlando International Airport. And you go inside and you get your own cab in there, and it takes you over to Islands of Adventure. It goes one way and back, forward and back, and that's it. And this is our little gate, right here. That's it. Isn't this nifty? If this attraction had better AC and not a long line, I think I would ride it all day long. It's actually really fun. And just like that, we have made it over to Islands of Adventure. I always like getting off over on this side because then you get to come up and get a real good shot at the front of the Hogwarts Express. Literally, it's on the path as you're walking out. Just don't be afraid to come over. It's great for photos too. Because nobody's even noticing that you can do this here. Look at all the people walking by and you can be taking great photos with the Hogwarts Express. Or maybe it's just not that cool. I don't know, to me, I think it's cool. I already snapped a selfie. When you ride the Hogwarts Express, you sit in a cabin with like eight other people and that's why I don't really like film in there at all. You can't film the ride, but you can show like the beginning part and stuff like that. But I don't like doing it because like you're really in tight spot. Like, you know what I mean? You're literally sitting across from someone you don't know. And for me, I'm sitting across from someone I don't know and sitting next to someone I don't know. The one thing I love about the Hogwarts Express is the transition. You board the train in King's Cross Station and it drops you off over in Hogsmeade and it stays themed. Like the transition is just amazing. Look at that. And here we are, Hogsmeade. How beautiful, right? This is, I mean, they really knocked it out of the park. Universal did such a great job with this and wait till you see what they have planned for Epic Universe, the new park. Now that we've made it over to Islands of Adventure, I kind of want to ride Hagrid's. I'm not too sure if you guys know this, but Hagrid's is my favorite roller coaster of all time. Like the overall theming, everything like that. Velocicoaster is a better thrill ride, but you can't beat Hagrid's. It looks like Hagrid's is a 75 minute wait, but let me tell you something, it's worth it. If you've never ridden this ride, trust me, just wait 75 minutes, you'll love it. I personally think Hogsmeade is definitely more crowded than uh, Diagon Alley because I feel like there's more people in a smaller space. I think Diagon Alley is actually like bigger because it has two different areas, but the one narrow walkway in uh, Hogsmeade can definitely get very like crowded and if you're claustrophobic, it definitely gets a little bit challenging navigating through there. 
This is the area I was talking about. It can get very crowded over here, but it is so beautiful. I always like to keep to the left. It's definitely not so crowded over here. And I always like to point out like some cool spots that if you want to tuck away and get out of like all of the traffic, always tuck back over here on the side of Honey Dukes. This is one of my favorite spots to come and just chill out and relax. It's peaceful, nobody's back here usually. Look at that. You get it all to yourself. You can hear the sounds from Honey Dukes in there. And sometimes you'll see people leave like little tiny gifts back here. It's actually really cool. Like handmade wands. Wow, nobody's even come back since I've been here. I love this. Back that way staff only. But this little nook, if you want to sit down and eat some food or something, come right back. It's really nice. It definitely looks like the rain is gonna happen again. And it already rained once today. I don't know if you guys seen it or not in the video, but it was very brief, like for about 10 minutes. That happens all the time in Florida. Like it'll rain for like 10 minutes, and then it would be clear skies for like two hours, and then storm again, and then clear skies. So if it ever does rain, don't give up. Don't go home. Just find some nice AC and shelter, and just sit down and wait. And then when you come back out, uh, it's like brand new out. Sometimes you don't even know it rained. Once you do make your way through Hogsmeade, the castle reveal is always beautiful. And I think the uh, Triwizard uh, Rally is uh, gonna start soon. So I think we're gonna watch a little bit of that. It happens on this stage up here. gotta keep moving along so we're gonna leave Hogsmeade now and try to make a full lap through islands uh, before the rain comes or the sun goes down I feel like we've done a lot so far we've been in the park for seven hours yeah just about seven hours but I walk at like a little bit of a slower pace because I'm you know videoing things and just uh, like slowly strolling through the park and I'm not trying to ride all the rides either so it's really nice but yeah it's been a great day a good a good day back at Universal Studios Another cool transition is how you go from uh, Hogwarts Castle and the Wizarding World and you can hear the music when you're standing on the bridge but as you start making your way this way you make your way into Jurassic Park and the music changes to Jurassic Park theme like as soon as you get over on this side. Look at this. Like I mentioned, two of my favorite rides are in Islands of Adventure. I've already talked about Hagrid's, but now I want to show you guys Velocicoaster. And this would be my number one ride if they had animatronic roller coasters on the actual attraction. But when it comes to thrilling rides, this is the better roller coaster. The only thing this ride is lacking is some on-ride theming, but it makes up for it in thrills. I mean, look at it coming over right now. Woo! It's so fun. Yo, Velocicoaster is just so extreme. The amount of air time and how long you stay like upside down is mind blowing. Like honestly, it really does throw you through a loop and I just love it. My sister loves this ride too. She got to ride it a couple of times the last time we were here for the Orlando Wood Former Meetup. She loved it a lot and hopefully they come back down for the next one. I really want them to come back down. My mom wants to meet Frankenstein again. Just kidding. She doesn't like Frankenstein. <laughs> We're gonna do just a big loop and make our way over to Seuss Landing, but I love coming by this bridge because you get to see more of Velocicoaster coming by. 
Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. Watch, it's gonna happen again. Let's turn around. I am also really sad that I missed the last days of Poseidon's Fury. It is closed right now and it's never reopening again. Uh, there's rumors that they are going to retheme this area to Zelda actually. There's like a whole bunch of different publishings, uh, news outlets all saying that the rumor is that Zelda is coming to Islands of Adventure. And I mean I liked I like Poseidon's, I like the water part, but I mean, obviously they could do something way better over here, but I hope they don't get rid of Mythos, the restaurant. I really hope, I mean, we already lost Poseidon's Fury and Simbad, but I don't want to lose Mythos, so I hope that stays. They could probably just kind of incorporate it somehow. Right here it is, Mythos, awarded world's best theme park restaurant by Theme Park Insider. And I have eaten here uh, quite often, and I have to say, the food is uh, phenomenal. The prices are amazing. The theming on the inside is awesome. I'll put a link in the description uh, if you guys want to check out the video that I did here. I actually did a couple videos here. The last one I did, I think it was the VIP experience, but I love it here, and I hope this stays. I really do. I don't want to lose it. I'm not ready to lose you, Mythos. I'm not ready. Hate it or love it, Poseidon's Fury definitely has one of the most beautiful buildings in all of theme park history. Look at it over here. This is just the out front, like the front facade of a kind of like show. And look at it. It's amazing, right? Look at all of the detail they put into this. I'm really excited to see what Universal is going to do. Like I said, I fully trust them with all of their plans coming forward. I mean, Hagrid's was a home run, Velocicoaster, uh, a lot of the other rides that we're seeing over uh, at uh, Universal Studios Japan. So Epic Universe is going to be amazing and what they do over here. We can forgive them about the Fast and the Furious Supercharged ride. They're making it up in Hollywood. They're making up for that. But I guess we shall see what is to come of the new area. And like I said, anything I say is really just rumors. Until Universal announces it, then it's just speculation. And a lot of times people have been heavy with, you know, uh, different uh, rumors and stuff like that. And then they turned out to be completely wrong. So you never know, but it's always cool to talk about it. You know, it's always cool to kind of... Uh, come up with a cool concept or idea and hope that the Universal will actually go with it. And with that, I think we are done here today. What an epic day at Universal Studios. You see what I did there, huh, huh? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the new Minions ride, and also how excited you are for Halloween Horror Nights. I feel like it's gonna be so much fun this year, and I hope to see a lot of you guys out here. And also, uh, make sure you check out the uh, link for the Orlando Informer Meetup in case you guys ever wanna attend that one. Tickets do sell out fast, so I highly suggest you plan accordingly. And and uh, I guess uh, we'll start making our way out of here. We avoided the rain all day and I feel really good about that. Stop off, see Gracie Girl, and call it a night. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I have two hats now and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!